Hey guys, Rich here from Rerun Zone. I'm a big science fiction fan. So when Battlestar Galactica hit the airwaves in 1978, I watched it all the time. I was always into science fiction, watching shows like Star Trek, Lost in Space, The Time Tunnel, Twilight Zone. But this, this was different. And it was different because of a little movie called Star Wars, which debuted on May 25th, 1977, changing the film industry forever. Star Wars was an instant success and a cultural phenomenon with people standing in line to get in. The story was solid and the special effects were like nothing ever seen before. There was no CGI in 1977. Practical effects were king. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill became superstars overnight. The sci-fi epic was so popular it inspired a ton of similar things from other studios. That's where Battlestar Galactica comes in. So when Battlestar premiered in September of 1978, it was seen by many as a direct ripoff of Star Wars. Some of the people that saw it that way were 20th Century Fox Studios and George Lucas himself. Now Glenn Larson, who was already a seasoned writer and director, and who created shows like The Fall Guy, Magnum P.I., and Knight Rider, dusted off a 1960s concept he had pitched to Universal Pictures called Adam's Ark, a story about a team of scientists fleeing Earth to escape an impending apocalypse. Universal wasn't interested at the time, but after the Star Wars success, Larson's idea became a hot commodity. Larson revamped his old idea and renamed it Galactica Saga of a Star World, featuring a group of rebels hunted by a cruel empire in a huge 500-page script. Worried about similarities to Star Wars, Universal sent a copy of the script to George Lucas for review. Lucas asked for several changes, like dropping Star World from the title, changing characters' names, and not calling the robots droids. However, Universal only agreed to remove Star World from the title and rejected the rest of Lucas' suggestions. Lucas had this to say about the show that became Battlestar Galactica. People felt something like Battlestar Galactica was a television version of Star Wars. It was the same thing, and they tried to sell it like it was the same thing, as if I had made it. Not only does it upset me because I didn't think the quality was very good, but it also upsets me because if I wanted to do a TV series of Star Wars, I couldn't. They've already spoiled the television market. Lucas was upset because after Star Wars came out, many of the people who had worked with him left to work on Galactica. People like Joe Johnston, Ralph McQuarrie, and John Dykstra, whose new Dykstra Flex motion control camera made many of Star Wars groundbreaking special effects possible. Even though a lot of the people went back to work on The Empire Strikes Back at Lucasfilm, Dykstra was not invited back as Lucas felt betrayed by the special effects supervisor Lucas was also upset because his company, Industrial Light and Magic, had made a lot of the technical equipment that Universal had used on Galactica, and Empire Strikes Back producer Howard Kazanchian had some trouble getting it back. On December 8, 1977, lawyers for 20th Century Fox sent a letter to MCA, the company that owned Universal. They insisted that MCA should stop making Battlestar Galactica, MCA refused. Then in June 1978, three months before the premiere of Battlestar Galactica's 148 minute pilot, which by the way cost $7 million, a huge sum at the time, Fox finally sued MCA Universal and ABC for infringing on Star Wars copyright without permission. This prompted Universal to file a countersuit alleging Star Wars was actually using the robot drones from their 1972 film, Silent Running. Fox specified 34 times they felt their Star Wars copyright was stolen by Galactica. Let's look at some of the similarities between the two to try and better understand the case laid out by Fox. One similarity was a friendly robot that helps the heroes. Fox compared C-3PO and R2-D2 to the robot dog Muffet on Galactica. That was one of the stranger comparisons, but they used it anyway. 
Another comparison was that the spaceships in Star Wars were designed to appear old and used instead of futuristic, and Fox claimed that Galactica copied that design, saying that it was ripped off. Then in Star Wars, there was a war between democratic and totalitarian forces where Star Wars battled the Empire and Battlestar battled the Cylons. Another similarity. There were other claims too, like Star Wars having a scene in a cantina with aliens playing musical instruments and Galactica having a casino with bizarre creatures. To win the lawsuit, Fox had to prove that the things they were claiming as original in the lawsuit were originated by them that those particular ideas actually qualified for copyright protection, and that Battlestar Galactica intentionally copied them. While it was easy to prove that Galactica's Vipers looked a lot like Star Wars X-Wing fighters, Cylons were more or less chrome stormtroopers, and Dirk Benedict's Flyboy was similar to Luke Skywalker, Fox failed to prove that Star Wars stories were totally original, as movies have been talking about conflicts between a dictatorship and a small group of rebels for a long time before Star Wars. Also, Lucas Saga was not the first movie to have robots that were friendly. So, U.S. District Judge Irving Hill threw out Fox's case on October 2, 1980, and MCA and Universal's countersuit was also thrown out on May 8, 1981. Then in early 1983, just before Return of the Jedi came out, the U.S. Court of Appeals said that Fox's case should be settled in a courtroom. Sid Sheinberg, the president of Universal, tried to persuade George Lucas to just leave the matter alone. But Lucas said, no, it's not over. We're settling when you pay off. The final verdict was never disclosed, but was settled in March 1984 before the case ever went to trial. Ironically, Battlestar Galactica had been off TV for a long time by then. In fact, after just one season, Galactica was canceled as the last of the 24 episodes aired on April 29, 1979. Then came the doomed Galactica 1980, which only ran for 10 episodes. Battlestar Galactica, of course, came back in 2003 under the direction of Ronald D. Moore and was a completely new show with almost nothing in common with Star Wars. In the years that followed, George Lucas talked about how he had written dozens of scripts for a live-action Star Wars series that he couldn't make because the technology wasn't there yet to make it financially possible. Then Battlestar Galactica would be used as proof that high-quality science fiction can be made for the small screen on a reasonable budget. The Galaxy Far, Far Away and Battlestar Galactica now have something else in common. In the 2003 version, Katie Sackhoff played Lieutenant Starbuck. Now she's in the Star Wars spin-off The Mandalorian, playing the character Bo-Katan in both the animated and live-action versions. Now, it's up to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Was Battlestar Galactica a direct rip-off of Star Wars? Or was it something else? Did it just take advantage of Star Wars popularity? What do you think? And if you like this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe even consider subscribing to my channel. Now, let me leave you with a couple of incredible paintings by legendary artist Frank Frazetta, which he did as a promotion for Battlestar Galactica at the time. And then some behind the scenes photos from both Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica. And also a little trivia from both shows. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. This is Rich from Rerun Zone I hope to see you in my next video. In the scene where Luke and Leia swing to safety, no stunt doubles were used. The stunt was done by Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill themselves and shot in just one take. Don Johnson was up for the role of Lieutenant Starbuck but lost out to Dirk Benedict because of his southern accent. George Lucas was so sure that Star Wars would fail that he skipped the premiere and went on vacation in Hawaii with his friend Steven Spielberg. Star Wars A New Hope is the only Star Wars movie where Darth Vader's signature theme, The Imperial March, is not played, as the theme hadn't been composed yet. John Williams composed The Imperial March for The Empire Strikes Back in 1980. 
Dirk Benedict has stated that his portrayal of Lieutenant Starbuck in the original Battlestar Galactica was inspired by James Garner's performance as Brett Maverick in the classic Western TV series Maverick, which aired from 1957 to 1962. 